Hello and welcome to this introduction to Honeybee um, energy modeling for Grasshopper using Energy Plus um, thermal engine. Um, my name is Brendan Levitt. I'm a senior associate architect and analyst at Loises Hubalodi Architecture and Energy. You can find our website here at coolshadow.com. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm going to show you um, Ladybug and Honeybee. I'm going to assume that you've already installed it correctly and it's live and flying. You can download all the installation files here from uh, grasshopper3d.com slash group slash ladybug. I also wanted to point out that there's a series of really great tutorials online already uh, that Chris Mackey has done. It's about 24 tutorials or so that goes a lot more in depth than what I'm going to show you right now. Uh, but I just wanted to do this quickly to get you up and running um, uh, with a, a quick introduction. So here I have Rhino um, open and um, I'm using Rhino 5. I'm going to go to Grasshopper and make sure you have uh, Grasshopper, um, the latest version of Grasshopper installed. Um, and then you, once you have Ladybug and Honeybee installed, you should have these tabs. And um, to start, uh, let Ladybug fly by um, dropping her onto the canvas here. And you should see that there is success. Hi, Brendan. Ladybug is flying. That's great. And then over to Honeybee. Drop Honeybee on the canvas and hopefully similar success loaded the standard template, etc. Um, you should also make sure that you download the latest updates for both Honeybee and uh, Ladybug. It's being actively developed and uh, the development community is quite responsive. And so you can see uh, they have these two um, components here. Uh, you can attach a boolean to these guys, um, run it, and uh, it'll tell you when they've updated. I'm not going to do it right now because it takes a little bit of time. Uh, it just downloads from GitHub and I highly recommend that you do that. Alright, so let's get started. I'm going to start in Rhino and just make a thermal zone. And the way that we do this is to make, um, I'm going to just make a box. So um, Honeybee works in meters, it works in the metric system. All the units are in metric SI. So you want to make sure first that your Rhino units are in metric. So I'm going to come here to meters, press OK, scale it, sure. And then I'm going to make a simple uh, rectangular zone um, that is, let's say, 6 by 8 meters. And Actually, I think I'm going to make something a little bit more complex so you can see some of the issues involved. So I'm just going to make a little L-shaped leg there. And I'll take out that. And then um, let's make this into a surface. Planar curves. There we go. So now I've got a surface. And then I'm going to extrude that surface up, um, let's say, four meters. So now we've got a rectangular solid here that is a little L-shaped zone. And I'm going to put that on a layer called zone just to keep things organized. And there it is. I'm going to change it away from red because it could be confusing with um, grasshopper. And uh, I'm going to add some windows to this zone. It's very important for uh, Energy Plus uh, that the windows are properly aligned to um, the face where they sit as a child of a parent, and I'll explain that in a second. It's also important that the windows not go to the edges of a surface uh, because, again, they are the windows are children of a parent surface. So I'm going to take a new layer here and call it windows and I'm going to make a window by um, by creating a plane from corner to corner uh, let's do a vertical plane there we go 
And I'm just going to take the midpoints here so that I'm sure I'm not going to the edge. And this is very imprecise for now. You can do this much more precisely, but now I've got a window um, and it is coplanar with this surface. That's really important. Um, and you'll notice that there's um, room all the way around. Also, um, this is not an L-shaped window. That's also important. It has to be either a triangular or um, a rectangular window. Um, so I'm going to make another window over on this side. Um, again, just to make sure. Whoa. Let's try that one again. There, so that's the that's the wrong way of doing it. I'm going to make sure this is smaller than that surface. There. Um, by default, um, south is down and north is up in plan. Let's make this ghosted so you can see a little better. So that's a south-facing window, and this is an east-facing window. I'll keep those for now. Um, and I'm going to make a little context shade here to make a little tree on one side. So I could make that as just a... Uh, I'm going to make this as a as a new layer, as a context shade, um, and so I'll make a tree on the south side that is, say this, um, just a plane, and I'm going to copy that, change object layer to there. So that is my tree. I might make it a little bigger, a little skinnier. And uh, maybe I'll also make a building next to this. There. So I have a building to the east and a tree to the south here. Um, and just for good measure, I'm also going to make a little overhang on the... Um, on, on the east side. And the way to do that is to also treat it as context shade. So I'm going to make that as a surface. And voila, I've got a very large overhang over there, just so you can see how it's done. Okay. So now we've got zones, we've got windows, and we've got context shade. I think that's enough to get us started on the um, model. So let's go to Grasshopper. And in Grasshopper now, um, I'm going to go over to the Honeybee tab. And the first place, what I, how I like to do this is to start at the end and work backwards. So I sort of know my goal. The end is to run a simulation of this thermal model. So over here in 9, Energy, you'll see a whole bunch of different components here. The one that we want is the first one, the Honeybee Run Energy Simulation. And um, I'm going to move way over my canvas so that I have room to the left because I'm going to work backwards. And the first step is to define north. And, um, and what I'm going to do is just go down this list. So you can see as you hover over, you get instructions. In this case, input a vector to be used as true north. Uh, a number between 0 and 360 represents the degrees off from the y-axis. And the default is set to 0, or y, uh, the direction of the y-axis. So if I don't plug anything to here, it um, will default to y being in this direction. Um, just for the sake of it, I'm going to, um, I might as well, on the context layer, I'm going to make a north arrow, and that's the project north, and then I'm going to make an actual north that is um, slightly off, so that you can see how this works. Maybe I'll extend that. There. Okay, so that's the actual north. Um, and so to define that as being actual north, I need a vector. So I double click on the canvas and type vector. 
this is usually how I try and find a component, is to just type something, hope it shows up. I'm going to define that vector, uh, set one vector, and the start point I need to define there. And click the middle as the start, the start point, and then the end point is north. So I've got my vector, I'm going to just plug it into north, and I've got north. If I then want to change that later to be south, I can um, reverse that. And I can see that here by going to vector display and plugging in oops, the vector into V. The anchor point is a point, and I can set that point there. And now I can see that vector. So if I wanted to turn that vector around, I can set that now is north to turn my entire building around. Hope that made sense. Um, so I'm going to go back to setting this north and move on with my life here. So um, I'm also going to keep turning off preview as I go through these so that you can uh, so we don't cover things up. Okay, next is an EPW file, and that is a climate file. Um, you can download these in a variety of sources, but Honeybee actually is a really nice interface here where you can, uh, it will automatically download one for you. And so if you go to, I can't remember where, uh, actually I think this is part of Ladybug um, here in Zero Ladybug, you can download a EPW weather file. You can also import one or open one that you already have uh, downloaded on your computer. I wanted to open the, a weather file. And I guess I'll just open this from a um, location on my, on my um, computer. So I'm going to set the Boolean to true here, and then it will navigate to a place. I'm going to go with Oakland, since that's where I'm screencasting from right now. I'm going to connect the EPW file into there. Um, there's lots of things to uh, to know about these EPW files and see. And in fact, Ladybug was first developed in order to visualize uh, weather data. There's all kinds of really neat ways to do that. Um, just to um, to give you a sense, I, if you plug in the EPW file into here, then uh, this will give you access to all that information. So if you wanted to see, for instance, what the um, dry bulb temperature is doing, then this will plot that uh, dry, bulb, dry bulb temperature over the course of a year. So I hope you can see that. It plots it right on the canvas. And, uh, and there you have it. I'm going to go back into these visualizations a little bit later. But you can plug in any one of these and uh, get that data. Um, this is uh, relative humidity. And uh, if you hover over it, you can also see the, the data. OK, enough about EPW. Next is analysis period. And um, analysis period, is, the easiest way to find this is to type in analysis period. and or analysis, I guess. And you'll see right here, ladybug analysis period. And um, this defines uh, what the period of analysis that this um, Energy Plus is going to analyze. So I plug that right into here. By default, it goes from um, January 1st uh, at midnight to December 31st at uh, midnight. So I can. Um, to shorten the runs, I can just say do two months for now. So I'll go to February 28th, I guess. It's not leap year. Um, there. And so now this will just be a two month run. Um, energy simulation parametrics is in Honeybee 09. Energy. Honeybee Energy Simulation PAR. There. It's a little hard to find. Um, so this I can plug into Energy Simulation Parametrics, and this is going to um, give us a whole bunch of finer grain control 
For now, the only one that I want you to worry about is the terrain. Uh, and this is determines the wind speed in your zone, uh, the way that it takes the EPW uh, wind speed and changes it per elevation and surrounding boundary conditions. So um, I'm going to just assume my building is in the suburbs, which you can see here as you hover over is listed as number one equals suburbs. And I'm going to connect that and we're done. Um, the next one here is a HB zone. We're going to look at this and finish up our first simulation in the next video. So I will see you over on the other side.